Hi there, and welcome to Global Heart Church. Uh, I'm Jared Keen, the senior pastor, and wherever you are tuning in from around the world today, really, really hope and pray that in our planning of this message, that it's going to really inspire you for the great journey that you are on and uh, for the great calling that you have in your own life. So enjoy the message and really pray that it's a blessing to you today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Great to see you. Awesome to see you. Can we give the Lord a great hand, everybody, this morning? Come on, let's give the Lord a great hand. Come on, let's really praise the Lord, everybody, today. Lord, we give you praise. Come on, let's honor Him. Lord, we honor you. We give you thanks. Father, we declare your goodness and your greatness in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just pray with me, everybody, too. I just want to pray for a few things right now. And uh, pray for you, uh, pray as we come around the Word, but also let's just pray for our church now uh, around the world, as we say. So let's just do that right now. Father, we just give you thanks and praise, Lord, for your hand on all of our lives. Thank you for everybody, Lord, who's new to Global Heart Church. Lord, thank you for all the family who've been here for many years. I just thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, and I just pray, Father, that as we head into 2022, Lord, as we continue to head into this year, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would touch everybody. Father, let us, Lord, not just start strong, let us stay strong over a lifetime. And I pray, Father, you'd strengthen everybody, even today, but Lord, you would strengthen everybody, Lord, all through 2022, Father, that, Lord, we might be Christians who are strong in the kingdom, strong in your calling, strong in your plan. Father, I just pray, Father, strengthen your people in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray, Lord, right now for our church in Melbourne. Pray for Pastor Eli and Fatima, all the team there, Lord. Father, do miracles. Help them, God. Father, I pray for all the team. They'd navigate this season in uh, Melbourne well. I pray, Father, give them courage, confidence, strength, and grace. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, for their serving and their love of you, Lord, and Lord, their outreach to people. I pray, Lord, Father, uh, Lord, move beyond what's happening in the natural, Lord, and I pray continue to touch people in Melbourne. And we just thank you, Father, for an amazing campus. Father, it's going to be flourishing and growing in every way. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that your hand is mightily upon Global Heart Melbourne. Father, we pray, Lord, also for Matthias and Nicole, Lord, all the team up in Germany. We just pray, Father, help them now. Grace them as well, Lord, in this season. Father, thank you that things are happening, miracles are happening. And I just pray, Lord, great salvations. Father, let people be, Lord, added to your house, Father, who you plan to add. And I just pray, Lord, that they would go from strength to strength. Thank you for the miracles they've seen. Father, but let, Lord, we just declare they're the beginning of the miracles in Germany, in Jesus' name. Father, in Zambia now, be with all the church. Thank you, Lord, that, Father, uh, for Justin and all the team there, Lord, as they've navigated this season, just thank you, Lord, that, Father, uh, the land, Lord, has, uh, Lord, we're just secure, finally secu- finalizing the security of that right now, Lord. Thank you, God, for the miracle in the midst of challenge. And so, Father, we give you honor for that. We give you praise for that. And we just pray, Lord, you continue to bless our church in Zambia as well. And Father, you would be with all the family there. Father, we just lift up to, Lord, right now, Tonga still. I pray, Father, for all the Tongan people, Lord. Lord, the majority of them are just such God-fearing people. Father, so many Christians. We just pray, Father, help Tonga. Let the nations help them. Let Australia help them. We just pray, Father, that, Lord, uh, uh, we would be a great blessing to them. And I pray, Father, they come out better from this situation. Turn it around, Lord. And Father, let Tonga be blessed, Father. Help them to quickly get on their feet and recover. And we just pray that that nation would be blessed, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray too for Australia right now. Lord, Australia needs your help. Father, we pray for every leader in the nation to know you. I pray for all the state leaders. Let them all turn to you, God. Father, let them humble themselves and turn to you, Jesus. Father, and Lord, our Prime Minister, we just pray for him, pray for his protection. Father, we just pray, Lord, right now that in the nation, Father, I pray, Lord, let leaders now turn to you, God. And also, Father, I pray, position your people, Father, in this time and in this season, Lord, that Australia might truly be, Father, the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the plan you have for Australia. Thank you for the plan you have for Western Australia. It's not changed. And Father, we just pray that it would come to pass, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for Western Australia. Lord, we pray that, Father, we quickly come through this season, Lord. And Father, there would be great blessing, great breakthrough, Lord, in uh, our state, Father. And uh, we pray, Lord, for Mr. McGowan, Lord, also that they, he and the team would all know you, Lord. Let them come to know you. Those who don't know you, let them come to know you. We pray that in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray peace in every heart, peace in every life. 
And Father, we just give you thanks and praise. Lord, and lastly, Father, I just want to pray for Pastor Paul DeYong. We pray for Paul, Father, from Life uh, Church in New Zealand. Lord, just right now, continue to heal him. Continue to touch him. We thank you, Father, for miracles in Pastor Paul's life and body now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you thanks and praise. Lord, we, we just thank you for his faith as well. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, bless him now and let his body be healed in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Can we give the Lord another hand, everybody? Give the Lord another hand. Amen. Amen. Did I say it's awesome to see you? It really is. Just elbow a couple of people and you can take a seat. <laughs> That'd be great. All right. Thank you, team. You can thank the team as well if you would like to. That would be great. Well, awesome to be in church, everybody. We had a great first service today. And then uh, just so awesome to see everybody here in our second service. Miss you all. Sue and I have been having a, a, a really good break. And we've had lots of grandparenting time. How good is it being a grandparent? I might just talk about it for about half an hour. No, I won't. And uh, it's so awesome. If I, As I said before, if I knew grandparenting would be so good, I would have just bypassed having kids and gone straight there. So it's fantastic. So we've had awesome time with our grandsons and our, and our sons as well. And uh, also keep, do pray for Sean. Sean's still recovering from uh, the injury he had a while ago and uh, still on a recovery there. But uh, he's, uh, he's in good spirits in Melbourne and good things are happening over there despite the challenges they're facing there in Melbourne. And uh, yesterday I was with all of the Africans in Western Australia who were at Jambo Africa. Did anybody go to that? Anybody? All right. Amen. 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 The rest of you Africans. Anyway, but yeah, it's uh, really big. There's, uh, there's probably about 15,000 people go over the day. So it's very... Uh, very powerful, and I was uh, invited to be a guest, and they actually acknowledged your sponsorship of children, so one of the people got me to stand up, and they just acknowledged uh, Global Heart Church and our sponsorship of children in, um, uh, they said, the Congo, which, it's, it's on the border, so, but uh, it was very nice that they were just acknowledging that, and I was hoping for other people there, any other pastors and leaders too, to also be inspired by you in sponsoring so many children in Rwanda because it got acknowledged yesterday at the event. And uh, so thanks everybody who is sponsoring children because I, I uh, think you're also encouraging other people to care. And more than ever right now with what's happening around the world, we definitely need to be caring for the orphan, the widow, children in need, families in need. And uh, the Lord has focused us there and we will continue to do that. But that was a, a, great, uh, a great thing uh, to have acknowledged yesterday, I thought. Uh, Jambo, Africa, which was really, really cool. Yeah, this was interesting too. They had, uh, I don't know if you noticed this, uh, I saw Lulu there, but they had um, Zambians up dancing and then they were followed by Rwandans. And I thought, I've, uh, there's 54 countries in Africa and I thought, I like the timing of that. <laughs> so the Lord just had that. There we go, Zambia, Rwanda, which is uh, two nations we're strongly involved with. So yeah, really, really awesome. Also, I got to see the, uh, a lot of the episodes of The Chosen on my break. Who's, who's actually seen that series, The Chosen? Let me see. Who's seen that? Wow. So there's still a lot of people who haven't seen it. Hey, try and get, in, get into The Chosen. Download the app, and it's a modern-day telling of Jesus and the Gospels and the Gospel stories. It, it, it starts out a bit slow, to be honest, but once you get into it, gee, it's really powerful. And uh, I've really, really been enjoying watching that and how, uh, how they've actually... Uh, how they've got Jesus responding in the current generation, I think it was really, really powerful. So if you get a chance to see that, everybody, if you get a get some time, it's actually really worth having a look at, which is good. So yeah, so good. Plus, how good are the Perth beaches? Like really, get yourself a beach umbrella, people. Like really. And uh, you don't need to go anywhere. Just put your beach umbrella up and look forward. And uh, we're very blessed to live in such a beautiful place. And uh, if you've got to be isolated, this is your place. Apparently, you're never leaving. So anyway, <laughs> so maybe get two umbrellas. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so it's good. But great to be, ha great to be back. And 2022 is going to be an awesome year for us. Awesome year for you. God's got a great plan for you. And uh, I want to encourage you. He's got a great purpose. And I, I love it. God works despite whatever's happening on the natural, whatever people are doing, God works beyond that. And I want to say to you that God will make a way for you when it seems like there's no way. 
So uh, this, so I've actually entitled uh, my short message today, because we're going to pray for you in this service, if you'd like to be prayed for. We're going to be uh, getting our leaders to come and just uh, fill down the front. And for those who want to be prayed for, we just wanted to pray again as, uh, uh, you know, uh, still in January for you uh, as we go into 2022, if you'd like to be prayed for today. But as I said, you don't have to be if you'd like to be. So I actually just want to give you a short message, and I entitled it, He Can Make a Way for You. He can make a way for you. Let me just say it over you this year. He can make a way for you. I need to say, declare that over you one more time. He can make a way for you. Jesus is the great way maker. And if we will let God have our lives in reality, God will begin to make a way that will surprise you. And it will surprise you with his goodness and it will surprise you with how you get to know God in a way that you've not known Him before. When you give God everything and you let God have your life, listen, the discoveries you make about Him are incredible. And I think it was C.S. Lewis who said, uh, he knows that God, Jesus, cannot be a figment of His imagination. You know, uh, the great literary genius gave us uh, Narnia, the Chronicles of Narnia, all the, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He said, God can't be a figment of my imagination because he's nothing like what I imagine, because he got to know him in reality. And many of us are coming at the Christian life or coming to church with a perspective that many times is formed from what other people said or a religious perspective, and it's actually not reality, because Jesus is a great loving Father who loves you. And in his word, whenever God's saying something in his word, you need to realize it's always from a basis of protection God's always going to protect your eternity, protect your life, protect your heart, protect your future, protect your children, protect your grandchildren. That's one of the most amazing things for me is that everything, as I walk with the Lord, I discover God is trying to always protect me and our offspring in Jesus' name. And he, not, just, not just bodily, but spiritually, eternally, emotionally, mentally, physically, relationally. Um, God is trying to protect you if we will do it His way. But the challenge for humans is we don't like to do it God's way. <laughs> we like to do our thing, right? And, uh, but at the end of your life, you're going to end up somewhere. And can I just let you know again, what you do now will determine where you are in five years. What you do now will determine where you are in 10 years. And what you do in the next five, 10 years will determine where you are in 40 years. A lot of people think, oh, I'll get round to God. I'll get round to that. I'll get round to be a Christian. Well, you've already made decisions that are impacting where you will be and absolutely impacting where your children will be. And so I was just hugging my little grandson here in the front row just for Geordie and he let me have him for three minutes. Ripped off. <laughs> and, uh, but, um, you know, but already, you know, when, I, when I'm cuddling Micah now at 59, I'm thinking, He's in God's house, Jordan's in God's house because of decisions Sue and I made at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So decisions you make now, everybody, you'll walk in later. So don't ever think how, because most people end up in their life down here. It's like, how did they get here? And they never, ever stop to realize decisions you made back there have positioned you here. Most people who get older, to be honest, right, who are you know, my age group and above, are not happy. And it's because they never considered that the decisions they were making were taking them somewhere. Decisions you're making now are taking you somewhere. And even if you don't make a decision, it's taking you somewhere. Non-decision making takes you somewhere. So when you see couples down the track, a lot of times older couples are like, George, how did we get here? He goes, I got no clue. I thought you knew. Well, really, go back here, and they're making decisions, making decisions. People I went to youth ministry with when I became a Christian, you know, 40 years ago, their decisions to go for God or not go for God, I now see on Facebook in their children and grandchildren. And some are awesome. Their kids and grandkids, some of them are just serving God. Awesome. Then other ones in youth who I saw play with it, play around with God, never quite committed. Now I watch their grandchildren be the recipients of that, which is a lot of it because they don't have God in their generation and they're having a lot of problems 
to deal with because Granny and Grandpa didn't really take the moment in the way they were meant to. So God wants you to go in the right way, but he wants to make a way for you in Jesus' name. So here's the key, everybody. Here's verse for the start of the year. James 4 verse 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he'll lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Say it one more time, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. The Bible's telling us God's trying to lift us up. He's trying to raise you up. He's trying to raise up your family. But you've got to humble yourself. Now that doesn't mean think less of yourself, right? I'm not worthy, I'm no good. That is not God. God loves you. He sees you as his child. He wants you to know him if you don't know him. If you're a Christian, God says, you're my son, you're my daughter. And, but what he wants us to do is think about ourselves less. That the first thought is not, what do I think? My first, humility is, what does God think? Humility is, Jesus, what do you think? What do you say? Um, what are your priorities? What does the word of God say? So you'll know somebody's growing in humility because they're actually applying the Word of God. Humility is not talking the Word of God, it's acting, activating the Word of God. There comes a point when you've been to prayer conferences and prophetic conferences where you actually need to do the Bible. Because <laughs> a lot of people sit and hear it, but it's actually the application is the humility. Think about that for a moment. Because a lot of people online, I'm at a prayer conference online, I'm at this, listen, great, but if you don't activate the scripture, that is not humility. Because Jesus could have come to earth and just sat in the presence of the Father on earth. Don't interrupt me. I'm with the Father. Don't interrupt me. It's just me and the Father. I don't want any common humans coming to me. But Jesus came to earth and activated the Father's mission. Jesus came to earth and activated the Father's mission, which was to reach you. So I get Christians who are sitting, I'm just sitting with the Father, and I'm like, hey, listen, the example was Jesus. He, he withdrew to a solitary place and then came back and activated the mission. So you'll know if you're walking now in your humility because you're thinking less of yourself and you're thinking more about the Father and about desiring to activate the mission He has for you. So that's huge, everybody. Humbling ourselves. Lord, help me to humble myself. Help me, Lord, to have a right perspective about myself. Um, you know, uh, a right perspective is that we are not owners, we're stewards. That, that's, that's a right perspective. You're not an owner. You, you come in with nothing, you leave with nothing. Right now, we're on the earth. I think the whole world is being rattled, right? But it's also a rattling of the fact that you can leave the planet at any second. If the one thing that's happening that would be right now a good thing is this is making people realize, hang on, you're not in control. You're not here forever. We're all passing through. And so people will need to go, hang on a minute, I've been given a vehicle, a body, I've been given life, I've been given opportunities, help me to steward it because all of us shall soon leave the planet because we're not here forever. There's eternity, uh, eternity is the only thing that goes forever. And that is access through Jesus Christ. The rest of it is passing away. And so I need to say, Lord, help me in my season, in my moment, to humble myself and do what you want me to do. I read Psalm 32 this week. She hit me. Hit me so strongly. Psalm 32 verse 6 says, Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Certainly in a flood of great waters, they will not reach him. Verse seven, I love it. The psalmist says, you, Lord, are my hiding place. You keep me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will advise you, I, I will advise you with my eye upon you, says the Lord. I love that. Do not, like, do not be like the horse or like the mule, which has no understanding, whose trappings include the bit and bridle to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. And then it goes on. The sorrows of the wicked are many, but the one who trusts in the Lord, goodness will surround him. Everybody, these are promises in God's word 
And yet the psalmist is also reminding us, listen, pray to God now while he can still be found. What does that mean? Well, the reality is, I don't think God's not gonna hide himself from you. But our hearts are so deceptive and we can so get proud that we can lose God due to pride coming in. The Bible says pride, uh, you know, uh, pride comes before a fall. Many people as Christians fell over in their life because they picked up their life again. And uh, they're now in control. And so the psalmist is saying, hey, listen, pray now. Seek God now while they can be found. Why is that? Because you could lose him because of your heart condition. That's why I always laugh when I hear Christians say, oh, I just followed my heart. Good luck with that. <laughs> People, I'm just following my heart, felt in my heart. Listen, you know, <laughs> the Bible says in Jeremiah, your heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? <laughs> and Christians, I'm just following my heart. Uh, it's deceitfully wicked. Good luck with that. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Your heart's deceitfully wicked. What does that mean? It means you and I daily are lying to ourselves. Hourly, we're lying to ourselves. God's word says this, and then we lie. And say, oh, no, he's fine with that. <laughs> God's word says this, we're like, no, 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 he doesn't really mean that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, oh, the Lord, I just feel in my heart. You might as well just say, I just feel in my deep wickedness. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I have the ministry of truth telling. Why? Because God says it to me too. God says it to me. I said, Lord, just in my heart. He's like, Jared, your heart. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> He's like, without me for 40 years, uh, you're cooked. Yeah, true, Lord. <laughs> exactly. So, Lord, what do you say? Because my heart is deceptive. My heart is proud. My heart is independent. Thank you for one person. <laughs> That's what happens. So, so the psalmist says, seek God now, quickly, before your heart gets you and trips you up. And then you lose God. Quick, 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 go now. Pray now. Be at the prayer meeting. Be worshiping me. Be seeking me. Because really, you could lose me any minute. Because your heart, which you oh, I feel in my heart, is going to trip you up. You're going to lose me. So go for me now. <laughs> you keep me from trouble. Thank you, God. Summer says, you, you are my hiding place and you keep me from trouble. Listen, if you right now going, I'm so stressed with whatever's happening in your life. This is so challenging right now. You may be great. I, if you're on a mountaintop experience, praise God, but add massive humility to it. It's, it's amazing how many people get the victory. We're then like, oh, I'm good. Look what I did. Don't need you, Lord. I'm really cool what I did. Look what I did. And then we end up in huge problems. But if we will say, Lord, help me right now, in my challenging moment, can I encourage you, don't go to drugs. Don't go to an addiction. Don't go to, you know, a carb addiction. Don't go to whatever. Say, Lord, help me now to hide in you. There's a place where you can just get in a room, shut the door, and just sit in God. And say, Lord, lead me and guide me. Sometimes when you're in a challenging moment, you know the best thing you can do is stop talking. <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop talking. Talk to yourself and say, it's fine, God's got it. Speak to yourself inwardly, God is with me, God loves me. Declare, and then declare externally after you first talk to yourself. And then... Say to the Lord, Lord, right now I'm feeling challenged and stressed. Show me what to do hour by hour. Don't, sometimes people are like, oh, what happens down there? Down the track? Who? Don't go down there. Don't go there. I have many times lived by the half hour or the hour. Lord, I don't know what to do in the next hour. Can you show Sue and I what to do? Can you help me? Can you grace me now? And then an hour or two and suddenly I'm like, I think we should do this. When Sue and I moved to London to plant what became the Hillsong Church in London, it's quite a quite wild thing going on right now for me. I said to Sue, where are we going to go and plant a church? Do we go north? Do we go south? Uh, I'd met Sue in London uh, when, you know, when we got married and we went round, but I didn't know where to go. 
And so I said, Sue, where should we go? And we, she was like, I don't know. Let's. So I said, okay, we just got to trust God to speak to us from his word. So anyway, it was literally the next day or the day after, it was within two days, my daily reading as I followed through the Bible was Jeremiah 13, 20. And I'm saying, Lord, where do you want us to go to reach people? And the scripture was, Jeremiah 13, 20, look to the north for there is your beautiful sheep. You expect to hear from God, but then when you get that scripture, you're like, what? I said to Sue, Sue, look at this. She was like, wow. We were like, oh my gosh. We went to the north. We started in um, Hampstead, Chalk Farm, Camden Town, for those who know London. And, uh, and so that's where we started the church. It ended up being in the city. And then a lot of the, all the teams, a lot of it all happened in the south, where they've just bought a building, London Hillsong Church has, and they bought the building now, not in the south where they all live and where all their meetings are. And they bought it in North London, in Golders Green, which is the Jewish area, which is literally where we started and 10 minutes from where Sue and I live. So, and that the original word God gave was, look to the north, there's your sheep. And now they've bought that building 10 minutes from where we actually live. You know, now people, <laughs> that's God. When we go, what do you want to do, God? What do you want me to do? If your year started with you humbly saying, what am I doing this month, God? What am I doing this week? What, am I, what job am I taking? What am I not taking? How many Christians are at the point of a miracle, they get offered a job for 10 grand and they're like, I gotta move because I got 10 grand offered? I could not care less. Offer me a million bucks. I may lose myself, lose my relationships, lose my family, lose God, lose what I'm meant to be for something that I went by what I feel. How many people have been destroyed? Because they were doing something that God was not in because they, listen, very simply, never asked the question. Never asked the question. So we've got to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I love it because verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. We just need to ask everybody, Lord, what should I be doing? <laughs> You know, over the years, pastoring 40 years, so many people, like, they get married to somebody, never talk to anybody about who they're going to date, what they're doing, and, uh, and then they're married, and then down the track, I've had several people, particularly women, I married this guy, and Pastor Ed, it's not very Christian to me, but I'd like to kill him now, what will I do? <laughs> uh, please don't kill him, because you'll end up in the prison in the Swan Valley, that's not going to be good. <laughs> but here's what happened, is people didn't ask the question, ask the question, should I be doing that? Bible says there's safety in the multitude of counselors, but you just got to get godly counseling. The Bible talks about ungodly counseling. There's ungodly counseling. By the way, Christians can give you ungodly counseling. Some of the most ungodly counseling I've heard is from people who go to church. What they were trying to do was win me to them, not to God. If I counsel you, you'll like me because you make me feel better. And I'm like, what's this counsel? It's not even in the Bible. This is counsel you're giving me so I like hang with you or like you or whatever, or esteem you. Godly counsel refers you back to the scripture. Godly counsel takes you back to the word of God. Godly counsel takes you to Jesus. Godly counsel takes you to humility. Godly counsel takes you to activation of the mission God has for you. Godly counsel will bring patience. Godly counsel will slow you down. Slow you down, slow you down. So we need to say, Lord, help me because you want to teach me. And I love Ezra, the book of Ezra. Have a look at this scripture, so good. Ezra 8. Then I proclaimed to fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him, look at this, the right way, Ezra said, for us and our little ones and all our possessions. To seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him. But his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. And Ezra says, so we fasted and entreated our God for this and he answered our prayer. Ezra said, we fasted, we prayed, we sought God, we humbled ourselves. And we sought God, I love it, to in, 
verse 21, he says, we sought God, not for, hey God, I need a, a, I need a date, <laughs> I need a wife, I need a husband, I need a car, I need a job, I need this, I need money, I need that. I need no, it says, we sought God for the right way for us to go. Us, our children, our grandchildren, and what we do with our possessions. Everybody, God wants to show you the right way to go. And by the way, if there's a right way, there's a wrong way. Actually, I'd actually say this. If there's a right way, there's a lot more wrong ways that can look good, but are not God. So many people ask for stuff. Lord, I want this, I want that, I want that. Just remember the old saying I heard years ago, which is when you get what you want or what you think you want, will you want what you got? When you get what you want or what you think you want, will you want what you got? What you end up with, you may not want. And also, too, we need to get our eyes off what other people are doing. And I loved it. I've been watching that series, The Chosen, as I said. And a couple of times in the series, the, the guy playing Jesus, it's been really nice. He said to people, listen, stop looking at them. Look at me. And it just reminded me, you know, the Scripture says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. But he's saying to people in the series, hey, stop looking at them. Look at me. Gee, that's a great word for all of us. Everybody, stop looking at what they've got. Stop looking at what she's got. Stop looking at what he's got. Stop looking at what they've got. Stop looking at what you don't have. Stop measuring up. Stop going, they got this, they got that. Listen, you also don't know what price they paid to have that. Sometimes we want something other people have. Listen, there's always a price to be paid. Are you prepared to pay the price for what they have? <laughs> I want to be like that. Well, there's a price. We, so we're going to say, Lord, help me to have what you want me to have. Lord, show me the right way to go. So the last couple of thoughts, ask God His will. Don't tell God His will. Ask God, what's your will? Don't tell Him. Some of us, our favorite chorus is, I am Lord, I am Lord. No, sorry, He is Lord. Sorry, Lord, I forgot. Yeah. We've got to stop singing our own chorus. I am Lord. No, no, no. We've got to say, Lord, you are Lord. Help me to surrender everything. Lord, I surrender. What we normally do is we say, Lord, here's my two hours on Sunday or whatever, but the rest of me is here. And God's like, well, I'm looking for you to give your life to me. The power is in the surrender. Why is that? Because God's got the best will for you. I looked at my grandsons who'd been born already here with their own personality. It's so evident their personalities, their giftings are coming out. They're only little. I'm like, wow, your personality's there, your gifts are there, your talents are there. God has designed them and they've come to earth ready for the plan. Don't choose your plan over God's plan. You'll never be happy. Not really. You'll be fulfilled when you're doing what God has wanted you to do in accordance with the design plan He has for you. You can't outdo God and you can't outdo His plan. You know, our thinking is limited by circumstances and finances and family background. We're going to say, Lord, thank you, you got the bigger will. Don't assume His will, everybody. Don't assume God's will. Don't jump in and say, well, that's God's will. I'm just assuming. No, 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 slow down. Don't assume. Don't assume. Ask questions in 2022 and ask humble ones. And then listen, don't speak when people are giving you the answer. <laughs> Imagine how people say, oh, I'm just believing this. Blah, 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 blah. And then the Lord this and the Lord that. And, and yet at the end of it, you just go. I just go, good luck. <laughs> Because you couldn't bring anything in. Because people don't stop talking long enough for God to speak, let alone for anybody else to help give some counsel. Everybody, ask questions as you go ahead humbly and then wait to hear in Jesus' name. Wait to hear. As you wait to hear, listen, God is going to not only take you the right way to go, but if you're a parent, your children and grandchildren will also ultimately be, be going the right way because of humility to hear in Jesus' name. Can anybody say a big amen? Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online today. Really great to have you with us. And special thanks to those also who give online. Your generosity is making the way for others to hear the message of Jesus, both here in Australia and around the world. If you enjoyed today's message, I'd love to encourage you to share this message with a friend, a workmate, a family member, and let's believe together that it will powerfully impact their life for good in Jesus' name. 
If you're unable to be with us at one of our church locations, uh, both here in Australia and around the world, please join us online every Sunday for Global Heart at Home on YouTube. God bless and have a great week.